The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the October 22nd, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's have an extraordinary one. Yep, let's have an extraordinary day, and the easiest way to do that is to always remember that everything in life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can send me an email, steve at tfn.com, inside the subject heading. If you'd be kind enough to put radio show question, of course, in our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the Lush Show. Right now, we have a mixed market out here. Mixed, by the way, you've got the Dow up 78 points, a quarter of a percent. Not a big deal. S&P's up about two-tenths of a percent, uh, five points. The NASDAQ 100 down two-tenths of a percent, or 16 points. Russell's up four. Semis are off five. Um, spot volatility is down 21 pennies, trading out to 1379, well below the 50-day exponential moving average out there. Gold's uh, down 60 cents over 11 pennies. Light sweet crude is up 77. Cents natural gas up nearly four pennies. Uh, you've got the 30 year T bond up five ticks. Lead the charge dollar wise to the upside. Biogen is up 28%, 63 buck runes. That is a heck of a move out there. Sherwin Williams up 23 bucks or four uh, percent and change. Stamps.com up 23%, 17 bucks. Well care uh, health plans up nearly 4%, a little over 10 bucks. Uh, Howard Hughes Corp down $21, nearly 16%. Hasbro up 18 or 15%. Intuitive Surgical down 17, Shopify 15, Chipotle off about 15, Amazon down 14. So certainly plenty to look at, but we're going to begin looking at the request coming in from you. The first request coming in from uh, Brent. Brent would like us to go take a look at oil, natural gas, and silica holdings out there. So where do we start? Let's start with... Um, Let's start with uh, silica holdings. And the question was, you may remember last week we were taking a look at this instrument out here. And one of Brent's questions was, what's the count to the downside on a daily basis? Was there a TD setup nine count pattern? And the answer is there was, but there isn't now. And the reason is because yesterday we saw a lower low. In order for this pattern, for me, to identify a bottom low needs to take place on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. That doesn't mean that there's not a bottom. It just means that this pattern in itself has not identified the bottom. You'll see that today, bullish engulfing candle, engulfing the last two days' sessions, easy to engulf yesterday's doji candle, but it also is engulfing a Friday session out there. So what does that tell us? That says, you know what? Let's go back to the daily time frame chart. Let's go take a look at the A to B equals CD patterns. There are several out here, but here's the one that just sticks out. Here's the easy one, the easy peasy one. That's with the A point on July 31st, your B point down here on September the fifth, your retracement or C point up here on September 16th. The one-to-one -one price projection, 698. The low uh, yesterday was 690. So now you've got a confirmed buy the D point out here. So if you're looking to get into silica holdings, the daily chart has generated the buy the D point pattern out here. But do you buy it right now? Because price is trading at 741. The high so far today is 759, and the bottom of the daily box is 762. At this stage here, the 
bottom of that box may, may very well be resistance. In fact, because this is a bullish structured box out here, with the center close to the closer to the bottom than it is to the top, the center being at 791. Brent, um, it's very possible that 791 would be the end of a counter trend rally if that's it. So you do have a valid signal. I can absolutely support going ahead and taking a uh, a stab at this, so to speak. It's slightly dangerous that price is not being able to get above that resistance. You'd ideally like to see it get back inside the box, but really, quite frankly, above 791. But nonetheless, you do have a bottoming pattern that is taking place as we speak right now. And I don't know what today's candle is going to end up looking like, but as of 1.11 in the afternoon, you have a valid bottoming signal. Now, the weekly chart may also generate a bottoming signal, Rhodes momentum indicator pattern. We don't have a bullish reversal candle yet, but assuming that this continues to move higher, then you could easily get a bullish engulfing candle on a weekly chart. And if price could close above 814, that would be a nice positive out here for the weekly time frame. So the weekly shows promise. It's got that rubber band roads momentum indicator bottom. No confirmation. Dailies generated the confirmation. And on the monthly chart out here, price moving lower doing less relative energy. No confirmation at this stage from a monthly standpoint. So there's your silica holdings. As far as natural gas is concerned, if we take a look at it, Here's four different time frames, 30, 120, uh, five hour, 300 minutes, and the daily. So here's what we know about yesterday's price action in natural gas. First, well, natural gas actually also had a buy the D point. Uh, so we'll take a look at that. But yesterday, we take a look at price action. Price got down to almost to the bottom of its box or support. And that's the level of 2.208. It actually got down to 2.213. Price is trading inside the box. It's consolidating out here. So what's the meaning out here for natural gas? Well, if we take a look at natural gas, not only is it trading with inside the box, right now it has rejected Stevie's red line out there. That's the oscillator and change line. Not a good thing. Here you can see the buy the D point of its A to B equals CD. That was your Gartley buy pattern. Took place when you had that key reversal and bull sash candle uh, back in the early part of October. Of course, since then, we've just seen a sideways move out here. So is this uh, bullish? It's got a bullish pattern with support having been tested a couple of different times now. But we haven't seen a breakout. A breakout at this stage here would be a close of $2.33. So you've got a valid bottom. You've got support that is held on the daily time frame, um, and I don't have a really great clue as to what its next move might be. Um, a close above two days of two days with a close above 2.33 would go a long way to saying that that Gartley buy was in fact a valid bottom out there. You want to take a look at Lightsweed crude as well as we go take a look at the December contract for Lightsweed crude. Here's our daily profiles. Let's go ahead and get those up on our screen. You can see a series of higher lows out here inside of Lightsweed crude. It's really suggesting to you and I that price is on its way up to at least 56.65 out there. Uh, it's a bullish structured profile, 51.47 being the bottom or support, 52.62 also being an area of support out here, resistance at 56.65. Price is trading above Stevie's green line. It looks like the upward price projection between 56.65 and 59.39, where price most recently broke down. There's your light sweet crude. There's your natural gas and silica holdings. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow's up 87, S&P 5. Let's go out to Philadelphia and speak with John. John, thanks for calling. Uh, how are you today? Hey, well, I'm very good. Uh, I wanted to follow up um, and ask uh, ask you about a couple of markets uh, following up on uh, Brent from Martinez's call uh, to you. Yep. Asking about a couple other markets bothering I me. Mean, my, my two, uh, Steve, are the um, uh, ETF, ticker symbol EWZ, that's Brazilian stocks. Yes. And... Uh, I'll uh, ask you if you could just give me a quick heads up on the euro. I speculate yes. both are bottoming largely a dollar decline play. So, okay. Uh, if you could tell me what you see, I'd appreciate it. Sure. So the EWZ, if we just follow the basic rules of uh, what happens when price passes a B point of a potential A to B equals CD, and that's a daily chart that we're looking at. The uh, the B point that I'm looking at here, John, is September the 12th. That did volume of 16.3 million shares. The high was 43.25. We're trading above that today. You had a nice gap to the upside. You've got some volume behind it, already more volume than the 16 million. You're at 19 million out here. So you've got a bullish uh, can today. This suggests that uh, EWZ is on its way to at least 45.22. That would be the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the upside. So that's what the daily time frame chart is showing us. If we take a look at Stevie's other set of tools, maybe you're in wave number four today. More likely you are in, well, you're in wave number four, no matter how we go ahead and slice that. Uh, this says I would watch 46.31. What happens to price as it gets up to that level? That is where the EWZ most recently broke down for its daily time frame out here. If I look at the weekly time frame, weekly time frame price above Stevie's green line, we can see that price had pulled back and tested its breakout level, 39.55. We looked at a breakdown level on the daily chart. I don't have, well, I do have a breakdown level here. If we just pull it back and see where EWZ on a weekly basis found resistance, it was at its prior breakdown level at 46.52. So that seems to be the range right now from a weekly perspective, support at 39.55, resistance at 46.52. Not right to the penny, folks, but you can uh, look at those 
those charts and see support and resistance on a monthly time frame for EWZ. Um, I don't have anything bearish here, only bullish signals to suggest around 54, 56. So that's what I see when I take a look at those charts. Before we switch over to the euro, uh, what questions may have come up since I took a look at the daily, weekly, and monthly for you? Or are you seeing something different? No, I, um, uh, I was interested in the higher resistance Okay. And uh, projection levels, you shared those with me. I'm just long from uh, last week down at 42. So I think I'll just hang with that and see if we can ride it on up higher. Oh, cool. Cool. Great. Great. Um, you know, it looks, looks yeah, good. So, Price uh, above so, the uh, resistance. You, you answered me on uh, Brazilian stocks. Back okay. To the euro, um, I'm kind of thinking that 109 was an important bottom. And I'm wondering if you can share with us. Uh, any guess? I got a real specific question. What number do we? Yeah, I'm. Th um, let me put this into words. That's okay. I'm, I'm think. I'm thinking out loud. Is there a price? If oh, uh, if exceeded, would lead to a buying scramble and wide price spread moving higher. Uh, uh, and I'm just thinking, gosh, maybe the template is the British pound having moved higher dramatically in the past two weeks. Perhaps something like that is, is poised to happen um, in the uh, euro, given that the Federal Reserve back on uh, uh, October uh, 11th, that Friday, said we're going to come out and um, uh, create all sorts of new money big time. You mean the non-QE, QE? QE? Uh, not QE, exactly. It's not, it is <laughs> not, not QE. QE. That's right. That's right. Okay. So if we if we just take a look at the euro US dollar and go to its longer term perspective, uh, here's what we see right now. So I don't have a bottoming signal per se uh, on a on the monthly time frame. That doesn't mean that it didn't. Uh, bottom, it's in wave number five, letter E to the downside. No TD set up nine count. This counter trend rally. So if it's just a counter trend rally, then the monthly chart is saying right about now is where it should stop. That would be the oscillator on change line. It's red. We can see that for the last year plus, um, that level has been tested several times. On a monthly basis, we've seen closes back below that area. And that price point, what happened to the data box? Uh, I guess I must have gotten rid of it. I want to give you the actual number. Uh, let me get my crosshair out here. So the level to be watching is 1.1164, give or take out there. If there were a close above that on a monthly basis, this would say price could run up to the 1.208. But right now, resistance is held. And my call here for the year on a monthly chart until that resistance level fails would be 104.95 before we would see the bottom and that is the breakout level inside the euro so that's what the monthly suggests to uh, me at this moment the monthly with regard to profiles it's also running right into the bottom of the monthly box that bottom is 1.115. So there's another level where if price can get above it, would perhaps say that there's a change in trend, even without a bottom um, signal or pattern, I should say. If I look at a weekly time frame chart for the euro, geez, uh, what, what can I come up with here? Uh, as we take a look at uh, wave counts to the downside, uh, that didn't generate it. So I'll be using this one next here. Give me a second here. So on a weekly basis, I would have a couple weeks ago at wave number uh, six or letter F out there. I don't really have any other bottoming signal that I can see. Price above Stevie's uh, red line, 1.144 is a possibility to the upside. The weekly chart shows that price is inside its profile. That's the upper right-hand chart out here, John. And this would say that price could make its way up to 112.90. Um, the the, the box looks 
It looks somewhat equally balanced, so let's not uh, spend a whole lot of time there. The bottom of the profile, that's what you'd be looking for, would be 1.1137. A close back below that would say resistance held. I'd like to see follow through, which would mean two candles closing above a uh, resistance level. So you have to come back and take a look at this at the end of Friday. The daily time frame chart for the euro shows that uh, it has now completed a TD setup nine count. What this also suggests to you, us, John, is that a couple of days ago, my oscillator and change line went from red to green. Uh, that tells us that the price oscillator, the difference between the 19 and 39 day exponential moving average was at zero. The phenomena that typically is associated with that pattern is we see that line and price catch up to each other. Now, John, it doesn't tell me whether the lines, whether price is going to move sideways and line continues to move higher or it's a combination of price pulling back or just price pulling back, period. Um, but it does suggest that the euro is signaling to us that it will pull back. That may be your next buying opportunity. If price can pull back and test Stevie's uh, green line, right now priced at 1.105 and hold, then that would say a key level of support and you'd have a rising price oscillator on the daily time frame with real resistance or the next level up being 113.9. John, can you hold on through this break and then I can answer any other questions you've got? Thanks so much, Steve. You bet. We'll be right back, folks. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now is a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a look at the uh, Euro before we went to the uh, breakout there. John, just before I uh, go back to you, uh, here's the U.S. dollar. Here's the daily chart for the U.S. dollar index. Unfortunately, I don't have the December contract uh, up on my white background chart. So we've got the uh, continuous, but I don't think the pattern is any different. And the pattern being that price pushed its way back to breakout support, $96.98. Its oscillator and change line also changed from, in this case here, green to red. This suggests to us, since support is held and you've got a T an active TD set up nine count pattern. We won't have confirmation of that today until we see the close. But this is suggesting a rendezvous between price and the U.S. dollar in the 97.79 area. Uh, so you're looking for the U.S. dollar. I think if I heard you correctly, you're looking for it to continue to move lower. You certainly want to see it close below 96.98 out there. But it looks like a counter trend rally first before that happens. But I don't have a I don't have a completed pattern here just yet. I need today's candle to form before we can say a support is held, breakout support, but I don't have that TD set up nine count. Okay, so now back to you and back to the uh, euro, U.S. dollar. Uh, Steve, I, uh, I just wanted to ask you uh, if you would consider one topic, perhaps not responding it today, but maybe in the coming days, if any thoughts occur to you on the question of Federal Reserve actions. First, a note, um, the uh, Federal Reserve first embarked upon something they called QE way back in 2009, I believe it was. And that, was fo that followed the Bank of Japan doing that same thing like five, six, or seven years previous to that. So in other words, I'm thinking the Bank of Japan prototyped QE. And then the uh, U.S. Central Bank uh, took, took it up in 2009 and 10. The Central Bank of Japan, the Bank of Japan, uh, added to its arsenal not only the purchase of government bonds, but yes. of Japanese equities visa or via, excuse me, ETFs in Japan. Yes. My question to you is, or I want, it's a request, not a question. My yes. request of you is to give consideration to this question. Might the, might the Federal Reserve be on the cusp of uh, not only buying T-bills, but perhaps U.S. equity ETFs uh, in an attempt towards solving this growing indebtedness problem, the idea of being boost the value of equities vis-a-vis -vis debt to get things back into better balance. Um, it's a thought I'm thinking, or it's a subject I'm thinking about, and I'd uh, love to hear any thoughts that occur to you on that subject. Okay, okay, great. Um, I'll, I'll absolutely do that. It probably would be more like tomorrow based on the number of questions that have come in by email out here. Plus, it'd give me a little bit of time to put some thoughts together on that. But uh, a real so valid, much, yeah, a real valid question. John, always good to hear your voice. Thanks for calling in. And we'll look forward to talking to you soon. That was John in uh, Philly. So Michael W. wants to take a look at Occidental Petroleum. The ticker symbol out there is OXY. So let's go take a look at that for uh, Michael. And so let me see what his question is. Can you please look at Occidental Petroleum? Okay, we got that. And can you review the TD counts out here, Mike, in uh, Harrisburg, Virginia? So as we take a look at a uh, heck of a nice bar today, so Occidental Petroleum uh, closing above, or right, I can't say closing, trading above the top of its daily profile that formed yesterday, uh, that suggests a potential change in trend out here, uh, about 5.3 million shares behind that move. Um, um, prices below the, the weekly and the monthly profiles out there, but those are not going to generate the early turn signal. So your question was on Occidental Petroleum, what's the patterns that are out here? There was a TD9 count uh, from a couple of days ago. It wasn't the type for that I would use to identify a bottom. Instead, you had that a couple of days prior to that. What I mean is on the trading session of October 14th, uh, prices moving lower, doing less relative energy. The very following day, a nice piercing candle out there. That's your bullish reversal signal to confirm a roads momentum indicator uh, bottom. Now today, if we get a close uh, above the uh, 4143 level out there, that suggests a change in trend. The real area to be watching out here, Michael, is 4230. 
37, 4230 to 4237. See, this did a TD setup nine count. What it really did for us or for you or for traders out there was it set up that resistance area. John and I were looking at some resistance areas. We always look at resistance if it's available to us, and that's 4230. It's trading at 4240. It closed about 4230 today. Additional follow through tomorrow, meaning it just stays above that level, suggests that uh, Occidental Petroleum wants to move higher, may or has formed a bottom out here on the weekly time frame chart. We can see price also moving lower, doing less relative energy. You don't have to worry about the TD setup nine counts out here. That was price moving lower, doing less relative energy. I think I said that the roads momentum indicator on a weekly basis out here. If this has formed a nice bottom on a weekly basis over time, price should move all the way up to resistance at 68.83. So, and the weekly chart, unfortunately, it's Tuesday. We don't know what the candle will look like at, on Friday. But at 1.36 in the afternoon, you've got a bottom signal there, too. The monthly time frame, uh, I don't have a uh, pattern uh, just yet. Let's look at a couple of different wave counts out here, uh, see if we can get to a letter, what letter can we get to. You're in wave number five to the downside. So we've got to go with the daily and the weekly out here, uh, Michael, and uh, I don't know what you're doing. If you're in it, you're looking to get in it, uh, but uh, you like to see today and tomorrow finish above, what was it, 42, 30, something like that, I believe. That would say that Occidental Petroleum has bottomed X O O X O X Y out there. So thanks for writing in. I hope that that helps you out with regard to that. We've got a question here from Sat P and uh, wants to take a look at. I uh, would like to buy a few shares in Smar. S M A R is a ticker symbol out there. Let's go see what Smar is doing when we take a look at the uh, charts. Well, it'd be helpful if I actually I got you. I, I hear you. Type in the right symbol is what. Uh, my other system was saying. So here's what we know with regard to Smart Sheet Inc. Uh, price is perhaps trading into support. Now, perhaps it is. That's the bottom of its weekly profile. That's the only profile that price is um, trading above as far as the bottom of its box out there. And so that level is 36.53. Let's go take a look at a daily time frame chart, see if we've got any type of patterns out here that you could trade off of. Um, so it makes this little TD9 count to the upside, makes a road momentum indicator count to the bound, uh, downside. Price gets right up to resistance, 4099 is pulling back. So if you want to buy this thing, then uh, buy it at 35.31. Price below Stevie's red line right now. Uh, that's 37.34. That's your breakout area. Let's go take a look at some volumes out there. Uh, if price is pulling back into that with volume of less than uh, 6.8 million shares, then you might have something there. Um, will price get all the way back? there and pierce the bottom of that uh, day a weekly profile again at 36.53 I don't know the answer to that uh, volume um, a couple of days ago as it was pushing lower was pretty you know it was accelerating 3.8 million still lighter than 6.8 uh, I'd wait to uh, be patient I'd be patient out there on SMAR based upon the uh, daily time frame uh, chart. You know, and price on the weekly is trading below weekly support, breakout support at 37.67. Be very careful. Wait for price to pull back to at least that breakout area before you buy a few shares. I hope that helps you out. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. What would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, let me just finish typing this in here. Well, no, I just asked a question, John. If you're listening here, going back to when uh, in Japan the uh, their central bank made the announcement that it did, uh, wasn't it the? Um, but it was with the pension fund monies that they were making those investments, right? They were moving out of debt and moving those things into uh, equity instruments out there. That that's my recollection. I'm going to have to go back and and obviously look at that. You know, if if, if that's what was going on, you know, smartest decision possibly made out there. And uh, and I could only wish that uh, the same thing would be done here in our country uh, with regard to the Social Security Fund, because it's a joke. It's an absolute joke as to what our government does with regard to, you know, they talk about, you hear all the politicians talk about uh, uh, wealth inequality out there, right? And I know this is going to get people, some you know, people on both sides of the aisle. I just want you to be open-minded out here, because uh, let's just say that you were in charge of your own retirement plan, which most of you are out there. And how many of you are going to put 100 percent of those funds into debt, into debt, paying the type of interest rates that they are now? If you were, you'd at least put it into marketable debt. Uh, our Social Security funds are not even in marketable debt. Not even marketable debt, 100 percent out there. Warren Buffett, even Jimmy Buffett would never do that. So why are we doing that with the that's the only way that you solve the so-called wealth inequality issue out there. But in any event, uh, so I threw out that uh, just John just trying to remember if it was what Japan was doing was they were also was their retirement funds, their pension funds that where they were getting involved uh, because they knew they had a pension crisis out there. And so that is the way you solve that problem out here. We're not doing anything out there. I, you can rob Peter to pay Paul. It's never going to solve the wealth uh, inequality, if, if you want to call it that, issue out here. The only way, you, because you can give, I, I guarantee you, we can, we can do this. We can, we can go out there and give our money to uh, folks uh, uh, that, that need it, let's say, more than we do, supposedly, or don't have enough, you know, built up out there. And if you give them a thousand, I give them a thousand, the guy on the corner, you know, that's holding up the sign, what do you think they're going to do with that thousand dollars? They're going to invest it for their future? 
yet. Not a chance out there. Well, let alone money is being taken out of all their paychecks, assuming they're not being paid in cash uh, out there. And uh, so the only way for them to get wealth, there's only real three ways to get wealthy out there, right? You do it by either being an entrepreneur and starting a business, which anybody can do at any point in time out there. So you've got that. Uh, of course, you don't want to tax the, be the, be the bejewels out of anyone, you know, for for that effort. But that's one way. That's how, that's how you know, we take a look around us, the folks that have accumulated wealth. Another is in real estate out there. And then your, your third way is going to be in the uh, markets out here, the markets that you and I trade. Those are the three ways. Yes, you can you can inherit it and you can marry into it. But we're just talking about the three normal ways that people would generate uh, wealth out there. And uh, so, uh, yeah, that's, that's Stevie's absolute solution out there. And it's a travesty uh, that uh, we got people that talk about. I watch these people on all these shows out here, CNBC, all of them, Bloomberg and, and the whole nine yards. And, and, and nobody talks about the simple solution that's out there. Robin Peter to pay Paul. Robbing the, the – rob, that's, a, that's, a, that's a myth out there. In any event, let's go to James's question out here. James writes in and said, hey, Steve, is today's action Disney enough of a sign of strength to be a buy? So as we take a look at uh, Disney out here, James, um, not really a sign of strength, so to speak, as far as candle formation. Um, you know, prices trading above the October 17th high that had 8 million shares. You're at about 6.5 right now. Not really a sign of strength, so to speak, but prices above resistance, that being the top of its daily box out there at 131. Uh, 66 uh, prices trading with inside a bullish structured weekly profile the bottom of which was 128 the center was at 131 we're at 133 so as long as price stays above 131 138 is the likely price target and on a larger term scale monthly scale out here prices above the uh, weekly profile so actually looks pretty good if we take a look at the weekly time frame this is what it's dealing with. Uh, you can see the roads momentum indicator topping signal. Price is moving higher, doing less relative energy. And a couple months ago, you got the bearish engulfing candle. Now, whenever you get a top, topping pattern, bottoming pattern, topping pattern says the first thing that should take place is price should go test support. So you've got to be able to find support. If you're buying the bottom, the first thing that should take place is test should go up and test resistance out there, right? We kind of looked at that with um, with a couple different instruments. Natural gas was, was one of those. Um, here, we can see that on a monthly basis, what Disney did last month was it got down and tested support. The first level of support or a level of support is going to be Stevie's green line or red line. In this case here, it's a green line. Price is trading above that. So at this stage, there's nothing broken inside of Disney. Now, if price were to close below Stevie's green line on a monthly basis, a monthly time frame, $78 would be its target. That's 132.06. Uh, we're not there yet. At this stage, support is held. Support is held. Price above the daily. Price is above the uh, weekly profile out there. It suggests to me, James, that price is going to move higher. Whether it's the sign of strength out there, I don't see it as a sign of strength. Uh, do I see a bottoming pattern out here? I don't. The daily says uh, price should target 137.36. That's where price broke down on a daily basis inside of uh, Disney. So that's what I see when I take a look at the charts and absolutely hope that that uh, helps you with your decision making out there. Okay, so I don't see any other questions. I don't see anything in the den, although Peter made a comment about the 30 minute chart for, I would believe it's the ES Mini. So speaking of the ES Mini, uh, let's go take a look at it. Uh, you've got the ES Mini maybe gunning. You mentioned a downtrend uh, line. Uh, and so I do have, I don't know if it's the same one you're looking at, but here if we take a look at a little downtrend line inside the ES Mini, we're just connecting the highs from the trading day of July 26th, and then that uh, takes into the high of September 13th. Then you can see the high of September 19th. That's likely where price is headed in the ES Mini with it being above the top of its box. Today, that's around 3021, 3020. So somewhere in that range out there. So the yes, S-Mini looks like it's poised to do that. The NQ is done. Now, when I say it's done, I don't really mean it's done done. 
It's completed its task. It did it earlier this morning as price got up to resistance. Now, is it 79.94? The actual high today is uh, been 79.88. So, hey, missed it by four bucks out there. That basically is close enough for my game and your game. It's a bear structured profile, but price is still above the center line of that box of 79.12. So it's not as if we've gotten a real sell signal from a profile perspective out here. If we do take a look at the NQ, uh, what we can see is this uh, formed an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. The 1 to 1.272 is a sell to D point out here. But price, uh, again, makes a topping pattern. Price still has not broken through Stevie's level of support being its green line. That is 78.77. If price were to close below 78.77, we should see price run all the way back down to the bottom of that new profile at 77.47. And then below that, we'd be looking at 75.68 out here. Um, that that's what I've got when, oh, you said the ES Mini 30 minute. Here's our 30 minute chart out here. Uh, I don't really have any patterns, resistance being broken, anything like that. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. We're going to lay around the shanty and put a good buzz on. Anybody know who sang that song? 
Uh, Max Musso wants to go take a look at uh, Aurora Cannabis. That was my segue into that. Uh, one of my favorite uh, tunes out there. I have not heard that in a long time. But let's go take a look at what do we can what can we see? ACB, by the way, is a ticker symbol for Aurora Borealis. Aurora Cannabis out here. We can see that price is trading with inside its daily profile. The bottom out there is 352. You want to see that level hold as support. Doesn't mean that there's a bottom in. Prices are below the uh, weekly set of profiles and uh, trading below the top of the uh, monthly profile, suggesting to move back to about 267, where we can see on a monthly basis, right-hand panel chart, that, which is really where price broke out, that big wide-ranging bar. Is there any kind of bottoming patterns out there? You're looking to buy it. So, Look, we can make the case that uh, this generated roads. It, we're not going to make the case. It actually generated roads momentum indicator bottom on October 16th. That little bull sash candle price moving lower, doing with less relative energy out here because this thing has had such a move lower, continuous move lower. When I put up the weekly chart, you'll see what I mean out here. I'd really want to see this prove itself to us before you put your money at, Mick, at risk here, Max. Um, and that would mean a close above 402, the top of the uh, daily profile out there. Uh, the reason that we say, you know, be cautious, even though the daily gave us a nice, gave us a buy signal out here, uh, we don't have that uh, yet in the weekly time frame. Now, this could be or maybe week number eight of a TD setup nine count, but look at on a weekly basis, all of the nine counts, none of which have held. That's different than prior, where we had a nine count high and a nine count bottom back in October and December of last year out here. Uh, so when we see this, it just tells us about strong momentum. And this strong momentum suggests that uh, what uh, Aurora Cannabis is likely doing is headed to 229, its next level of support from a weekly standpoint out there. The monthly time frame, just not enough data to really help us out here, Max. But I say, uh, I say uh, keep your hands in your pockets out there. Don't get the munchies just yet for Aurora Cannabis. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned. Two great hours following David White and then Tom O'Brien, and I'll be back with you on Wonderful Wednesday. Take care.